fans don't really get to see this side of me. You you do, obviously. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's why I think the, the outpouring of emotion has been quite nice because people that know me actually know that that person on the pitch is just like, I just want to win. Since they did the new stand, this was always your corner, right? What, what yeah. made you choose this, first of all? Honestly, it's because of the space. You could just put your bag in here, because we didn't have these to start with. So and compared could... to other dress rooms, this is a big space, right? Isn't yeah, it? I it's mean, lovely. When they did the stand, it was yeah. still in the championship. Mm -hmm. I know there was a bit of input about what people wanted from the dress room, but no. this is a decent size. No, it's really, really nice. And also, I think when you start looking back to what, what we had when we started, I remember we used to come in here when Malky was the manager and you'd watch the football on the big screen in the old dressing rooms, you remember? And we, you weren't playing or we trained there. You used to play, uh, get dressed in the old dressing rooms, yeah, all wooden. Yeah. And, yeah, that was... Further along, you don't recall, right? It no. wasn't on halfway. Either, no, no, tunnel. it was down there and you had to yeah. walk down. <laughs> There's a few bottles of stuff being launched around here back uh, <laughs> yeah. at the end of April with a promotion. Yeah. I mean, this was, this was a... This has come alive in here, didn't yeah, it? This it was, was probably one of the best moments in this dressing room since they've been built. No, I, yeah, I think I definitely agree. I think from a personal note, it was we spoke about it afterwards. I was really like, felt like I was on the on the fringes of it. Um, obviously, there's games you can look back and oh, you contributed, you scored, or assist, or whatever it might have been. But the runnings when it really matters, and all the boys dug in. What what I love about this group is, especially with the gaffer, what he's done is to get a circle just before you come out. So captain or the captain on the day, sorry, will will speak. So 30 seconds before you go out, we all get in, physios, the lot, you know, it's all of us. And, and ultimately that it's all of us versus everybody. Because if we have a bad game, fans are entitled to boo. So you have to take it and all of us have to stick together. So we normally have a little chat. And then as soon as that, that whistle goes, we're ready to go. Well, let's have you walk out of that tunnel. <laughs> just so you get to do that. And you I can... say, if you said one last time, I think I might. No, the no, tears would have no. just went like that then. Let's, <laughs> let's just do that and you can perhaps talk people through how that feels on a match day. Genuinely, what point do you hear the crowd are conscious? It's showtime. Once that door opens, so once that door's shut, the music's blasting, everyone's chatting, there's always something that you don't really hear the crowd, but the second that door opens, that's when it's you, you hear the noise start coming through and then as we've done for many years, we'll walk out. Refs are here, do your normal get up and we stand ready to go. And then that's where I normally catch eyes with you and you'll go like, like ready or you would normally give me a bit of yeah, stick yeah. to be fair. Yeah, 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 try to, yeah, <laughs> try to. But yeah. Uh, yeah, just catch eyes with you, know it's game time. And then for me, as soon as I walk past that line, it's game time. It's actually a lot bigger, isn't it, when there's no fans in there, Ridge? Feels small normally when you're playing. So I literally do that walk and I'm going over there and my family's in two and three. I try and like walk here, talk to the mascot, make sure he's had, or he or her has had a good time. And then I catch eyes with them. And then nobody else matters. It's like the one bit of freedom. It's Perfect. Come on, we're going Ipswich. Oh, the old chip. Yeah, just inside it. Just because the back pass was from there. I'm just trying to think how far. Just trying to work it out. It was a back, short back pass from yeah. Carlos what? Edwards. But I slid, chop, and then, and then obviously kind of put it into the far. And that sort, of, that sort of technique, right? People mm. don't immediately associate with a hulking striker, yeah. right? But yeah. have, obviously when you got scouted, mm -hmm. By Watford um, at Walsall, mm -hmm. then people don't just say he's a big bloke. Yeah, and he can. My, my game was never actually about being a big bloke, believe it or not. I used to be a midfielder, so I actually enjoy passing it, and probably why I'm, my assists are quite high as well. Because I'm always my first thought is to give it to somebody else more than to actually be a, a goal scorer in number nine. You know, like your Lufers, who are a natural goal scorers, your Igalos. So um, yeah, I've got that that feel about it, but when I was at Warsaw, I scored a lot of goals like playing on the shoulder and 
getting in, into them. But I always had this feeling that when I was stepping up through the leagues, I just needed to get bigger. It's a different time, wasn't it, then? The championship was proper championship, shall we say. So when Gianfranco Zola became coach, mm. how much did you feed off him and, and how, much did oh. that, how much did that set about you changing your game? Night and day. Daishi had me and Malky had me to a point where I understood how to play as a striker, properly understood how to uh, play as a championship striker. Zola then changed me to feel, link up play shoot properly, which sounds really mad, but the shorter steps, which I've spoken about before, um, and enjoy it. There's no, like, I think when you start playing, with, now it's a bit different, but when it was very English and British in the, in the sense of a number nine and number nine and number 10, like we all, we all had roles within that. Um, and then you get like people off the continent and they're like, no, no, you can be fluid, you can move off it. And that's why once me and Vidra started playing, it was just like, Chalk and cheese, we, we just complement each other so well. Right, we're going to go over to uh, a, a spot you're familiar with. <laughs> but when you, when you stand there, yeah. we saw her in the semi final, took a drink of water, slowed it right down. But mm -hmm. you've almost become a penalty expert. And, <laughs> well, only yeah, because yeah. you keep scoring them, right? Yeah. So when you stand there now, mm -hmm. was that Tottenham miss? Was that the one that said, I'm never going to. I'm never going to no, go that was the first side time. in step again. No, that was the first time I changed my mind. So these these penalties now, yeah, they I are decide. a skill. They are a skill, though, aren't they? Yeah, people were thinking that. People think I just run up and blast it. But believe it or not, I've not hit one full power yet, and that, that's going to sound really strange because the the mind game starts from when the whistle blows. So that before the ball's been played, so foul yeah, and sar. Ball could be anywhere. Yeah, ball's over there. That keeper, if you notice now, has tried to get to the ball first before me. Right. He wants to take, me to take it off him, little wrestling match. He says a few things to wind me up. And that's when uh, the QPR one we had, I know we ended up losing the game, but while we put it down and there was messing behind me, he's like, you're going down the middle. I know I am, you're going down the middle. I'm going for that square there, bet you don't stand. And then I hit that square and it's 1-0. That's why you give him a little bit as you go past, because it's what like that. What did you say to him? I told you, in a, in a not so nice way, but yeah, I, okay. told you, I told you where it was, I told you where it was going. But that's what it is like, and then you, I think we played, we played Birmingham actually, and Etheridge, because all of the keepers now know it's going in the middle. Yeah. But you've got to be able to stand, it takes a brave keeper to literally stand and be able to react quick enough for me. That probably goes less than half a second from there to there and you've got to be able to react and keep it out and away from me. Because if it stops, my momentum puts me on a six yard box anyway, and then I'll get a tapping. That's the aim. That's, well, that's the thought process, should I say. I'm going to ask you to stand on the... You've got to find the exact place. Oh, the, Le the Leicester goal, the goal. The goal. It's, just, it's, it's just come now as that goal, as it? That goal. It's become that goal. That's what we call it. Was it further out than I actually think? Because I always felt, it was, you know, it's probably about where you are. But I've always felt in my memory, it was about here, but it weren't. Cross, Huggy heads it back from about where he is, isn't it? The whole world slowed down. So as you can see the goal now, I just felt like I had that. What, what, did, you think, what did you think Huggy was going to do? Oh, we all knew Hoggy weren't going to shoot. He's not going to yeah, go for goal. No, no. So he was just putting it back into the What was your area. biggest concern when you knew he was heading it back? Because you had a couple into the box with you, didn't you? Yeah, so I had Vidra coming on from this side and I could see it and I just give the biggest Troys you've ever heard. Like, Troys, he, if you, if you see it, like watch it slow, but he kind of goes, whoa, not getting away of that. Because if he would have hit that, I would have, I was so focused on hitting it, I probably would have kicked him as well. But um, as soon as he got nodded back, I just remember seeing a big chunk of the goal empty. I was like, oh, all you got to do is put it there. It's like the world like, just went into slow-mo and everything was just like easy. And it scored and it just went whoop. <laughs> like the whole volcano of noise. And remember it started from there so the noise kind of 
built with us, if you remember yeah. it back. It kind yeah. of was like a wall of noise, 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 noise. The whole place just went up. And that's what I mean, the time went from really slow, 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 in. And I was like, oh, shirt went off over there. Still don't know how I got that shirt back, considering Someone, how many yeah, people. Yeah. Someone should have just nicked that. <laughs> Not, obviously, condoning uh, theft or anything. But as a reasonable season, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then over to your brother. And then my yeah. brother's there, and that was a big old drop before, wasn't it? Yeah. Which has now been filled in. But Which you only found out about when you jumped. Yeah, when I jumped, and I was like, whoa, that's a long way down. Thankfully, he caught me, because me and the studs wouldn't have done well. But no, it was a, it was a great day. And I remember you did a, a like a behind the scenes kind of uh, family look as well. Do you remember? And I just saw there all was, the lads. Just lucky you had someone with the family, yeah. the, like family camp down yeah. in that area. And then like, it yeah. Was trained, I think it was trained on them rather yes. than in them. Yes. So yeah, it was yeah. getting their reactions to the penalty being given. And yeah, and then my, I just thought, like, I've watched it back about 80 <laughs> times. I see like disc flying over, Justin's going over the stairs. It was like, Everyone was just like, get down there, it was, it was crazy. And uh, Shorty was there as well, the yeah, old... Uh, announcer. Announcer, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, you see like his reaction and then it, then it makes you re remember how old you are when you've been here and you see those faces and those names and it's like, oh yeah. It'll be 10 years soon yeah, since that. Since that goal, if yeah. Your, what you've done for Watford is going to be defined by more than that mm -hmm. goal, obviously. But if you had to say one moment that you're most proud of all that got you most excited is it a silly question to say was it that goal because i, I, yeah, I don't for, know for me it's not it's for me it will always be bright and away that moment that whole day of we're the first kickoff i remember speaking to you after we, we played on the thursday before and everybody else had played and we had to beat forest and we beat them we made hard work of it but then it was just like this is the game, it's, the pressure's on us now, win, and then you never know what will happen. And it definitely takes it to the last game of the season. And we was awful that day. I know we won 2-0, but Gomi had the best game of his life. We got saved by the sand. The sand it, of yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, <laughs> it was just one of those, that, that, whole, that whole day at Brighton and then getting back and obviously the scenes that everyone's watched when we got promoted. But for me, it was like the realisation afterwards, like we, we done it. Within, there was, I've never actually said this, there was a moment where I was on the bus. I don't even have this in the book, so you're gonna, this is a, me and you, me and you. Thing. I got off the bus and I had a Blackberry then, and I went, I called my dad. Oh, I can't call my dad. And I just burst into tears, like, I'm so happy with the emotion. I was drained. And I was like, I'll call my dad, because he's the one who taught me how to play football. He's like, oh, dad, dad. Can't call my dad, and then that's why that day was just like so special to me as well because it's just everything that those people sacrificed for me to be the person I am today. I couldn't even celebrate it with them, so that was for them. How do you feel? I'm gutted, mate. I'll be honest, I'm gutted, but all good things come to an end. I don't believe this is the end of me and Watford. I believe this is the end of my footballing career with Watford. Um, and I've had a great time. 